Hello everyone, welcome to a digital audio version of the Josie to Lagos podcast. This is a podcast that discusses issues that pertain to Africa, be they in business, in politics, in culture, and anything else in between. I'm joined by Awande Zwane, who is a graduate from the University of the Witwatersrand. She studied law and she also studied international relations. And when she's not doing things like this, she works as an entrepreneur in Johannesburg and as a business analyst. Welcome, Awande. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. And if you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Mighty Jamie. I'm also a law graduate and a business graduate from BIT and I work in the communications and media space. And one of the things I love to do is have discussions about Africa. Why, if you may ask, because I believe that Africa has not fully achieved her potential and that it's going to be on us, this generation, to fix the continent, to do things that have not been done, the potential of the continent and its accomplishments are not enough. So the purpose of this podcast and all of these discussions is to examine that core question, what's wrong in Africa that's holding us back and what solutions exist to get Africa where it needs to get. So that's broadly the philosophy of the Josie to Lagos podcast and all of the content that's created around it. So today our topic is Twitter and Nigeria and Ghana. We're going to have an interesting conversation now I think. Because a lot has happened. There's a lot of, you know, exchange of fighting <laughs> words between the Ghanaians and the Nigerians. As usual. As usual. This is digital Joel of Rice, the debate, <laughs> so to speak. So um, just to, to bring you into perspective, if you haven't been following, here's basically the background, what you need to know. In 2019, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey visited several African states. Number one, he visited Nigeria. He visited Ghana, he visited Ethiopia, and he visited South Africa. Now, these countries all have different significance on the continent. Nigeria is the largest population, as you know. It's the largest economy in Africa. Uh, South Africa is the second largest economy, and some would say the most sophisticated in terms of industrialization. Whereas Ethiopia is the capital of the continent and the African Union. Second most populous um, country on the continent, and great significance uh, to the African Renaissance Project and the Pan-African Project. And Ghana has always occupied a special position in Africa as the first independent African state with prominent leaders such as Kwame Nkrumah and several others such as Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings. So Ghana occupies a special place. It's one of the hubs of African everything. And um, they have quite a prominent presence in Europe and in America as well. So they are one of the cultural and business icons and leaders on the continent as well. So Twitter CEO Jack Dawson visited all of these spaces in 2019. In 2020, he had said that he was actually going to move into Africa, but he didn't do that at the end because of COVID-19. Now, Twitter has made an announcement and they have announced that their first headquarters in Africa is going to be in Ghana, in Accra. And they have started their hiring process. They're hiring 11 people who will be working remotely for now. The office hasn't actually been built, but they've started hiring certain people and they've made that particular commitment. So Twitter CEO put up the announcement. He said, listen, we're coming to Africa and we're coming in a big way. Now, just to put it in, in perspective and to give you an understanding of why Twitter said they're doing this, they gave three reasons. Number one, they have said that Ghana has exemplified support for free speech, support for online freedoms, and obviously as an online company, they care about that. But they've also identified that Ghana is the head, that's where the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area is located, and as such, they said that it's an attractive space for them. Facebook has lots of offices in Africa. They have offices in Nigeria. They have offices in South Africa. Google as well has offices in South Africa, in Nigeria. So other parts of the FANG companies do have presence in Africa. And FANG, if you're not familiar with that um, phrasing, is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. They're viewed as being the tech leading institutions. So. What happened online is that the Nigerians viewed this as a snub. They said, listen, 
this is not great and i'm talking here about nigerian citizens not necessarily the government they said listen they, this is a moment to reflect on nigeria's ease of business which ranks lower than ghana the levels of corruption and also the peace index because currently uh, in the last <coughs> rankings of the global peace index Ghana ranked 43rd overall, whereas Nigeria ranked 147th, 104 places behind it. And what's even more interesting is that the director of project management at Twitter, mm -hmm. one of the people actually involved in the announcement, has Nigerian uh, roots. Yeah. Uh, so her name is Uche Adegipte. I'm probably butchering her name. Adebite, yeah, yeah, Adebite sounds correct. So she's from Nigeria and she didn't even like push and motivate for Nigeria. So that's the full context, that's the full background, bringing you up to speed. I wonder, what were your thoughts about this announcement? What did you think about all of this? Uh, I, I think it was, it actually wasn't, it was the obvious choice. Mm. Um, it was the obvious choice for, I mean, we see the whole, the, the, the free trade agreements yeah. and how that's all happening. So Ghana right now is the place to be. There's a new scramble for Africa yeah. and it's starting in Ghana because that is now the hub of African trade. Yeah. So this wasn't um, surprising at all. I think Nigeria was more the obvious choice. I think a lot of people would expect that it would be Nigeria just because of how Nigeria just is the tech hub capital of Africa. Mm. It has the most tech hubs in, in the continent, mm. over 90, and also one of the biggest um, mobile subscription um, on the entire continent. Mm. But mm. just as you've said, a lot of factors were working against Nigeria. Yeah. Um, the, the issue of peace, of course. Um, uh, and you're going to get to the issue of SARS, which we saw yeah. blow up yeah. um, uh, last year, and it blew up on on Twitter. Yeah. It really yeah. was Twitter that moved the, 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 the movement mm. and took it across the diaspora of Nigeria, really connected on Twitter. That was their home to move the, um, the, 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 the movement forward. And of course, that looks good on for yeah. Twitter, but practically then, is that the kind of place where you can bring employees and build um, your, your base in Africa, it mm. looks like no. Yeah, so I think you're, you, you're, you're right and you've made reference to it. So there's, there's two things I want to discuss first and then we'll talk about the third thing. Number one is, for me, I think it was already a foregone conclusion at the point at which the NSAS movement happened. And if you were not following last year, Youth of Nigeria, a few months after the George Floyd protest and the Black Lives Matter movement really gained momentum, in America, what they then said was that they were experiencing police brutality as well, and they were being profiled by this special armed rapid response unit called SARS in, in Nigeria. And basically, what they then said was that this unit must be broken down because it was profiling Nigerian youth and presuming that anybody who had <coughs> iPhones, dreadlocks, um, fancy clothes was participating in some kind of crime, and they were brutal, they were killing civilians, they were soliciting bribes, and this conversation was widespread throughout Nigeria and it was driven on Twitter as well. And Jack, the CEO of Twitter, actually participated in the NSAS movement. They even gave them one of those little icons that they normally give yeah. to international movements. You know, so if you type hashtag NSAS, you'll see a Nigerian fist with a Nigerian flag overlaying it. And that to me already indicated that there's no way that Jack Dorsey is going to move his company or commit his company to a space which he has already identified as being a human rights abuser while yeah. he's trying to indicate to the continent that this is a platform where they can fight and advocate for social justice and have discourse there. Yeah. But also in the background, there's also just the reality of what happened with, um, not, not with, with MTN in Nigeria. Yeah and they were being harassed by the government and they were facing a lot of regulatory oversight yeah. when they had already been established and they had to pay large amounts of money and that's a story for another day in and of itself but the whole um, story of how MTN confronted and dealt with the government in Nigeria was actually quite interesting and if you're watching that as Jack Dorsey that's not the kind of energy that you, you need and you want as a business. You don't want to get into a, into a country and find that later the politicians are going to shake you down or try to bully you. And if that's your first office 
And then now all of a sudden you have to make a move because now you've said something or your company has done something that Nigeria doesn't like. Yeah. That can be an issue. You want to be in a country that respects international law, that respects human freedoms, and has a strong and robust <clears throat> democracy. And, I, and Ghana is all of those things. And there's less concerns. There's corruption everywhere in Africa, but there's less concerns about certain kinds of corruption in Ghana. So that's the first thing. And I think just to piggyback mm. off of what you said, this isn't just um, a move into Africa, but yeah. um, they have to also consider what it looks like because a lot of image, uh, Twitter has become the space where, you know, yeah. People can speak their minds yeah. and where people are called to order. Twitter has really yeah. moved the culture and moved a lot of political conversations. So they also have to look at things, uh, um, their image in yeah. moving into a country. So, of course, the business aspect of it is, is, is key. But for a platform like Twitter, which has been, you know, the place where these conversations unravel and happen yeah. and go forward, they have to look at those political aspects of where they they decide to place themselves. It's a PR move in as much as it's a business move. For sure, for sure. And I think something else I wanted to mention as a second point, which is not really about the Twitter decision, but around something that I've noticed about Twitter. There are discrepancies, in, and, and this speaks to why there is a need, actually, for Twitter to have an African office, because there have been discrepancies on African Twitter versus other markets. So, for example, the way that verification tags are given in, in, in Africa, it's only to certain celebrities, yeah. certain people who are well connected, whereas this is supposed to be something that is accessible to a large range of public figures who are afraid that their personas may be duplicated. And you'll find that there are prominent people who don't have verification badges. Last year, uh, Sophie Mukwena, who's an SAPC journalist, and if you're watching from outside South Africa, that's the South African Broadcasting Corporation. She covers a lot of African content. She had 200,000 <coughs> followers at the time, but she actually had to start asking for verification online, which is not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. People of that stature should have verification, yeah. um, and there's a massive gap there. But the second thing is that if you look at American Twitter and even European Twitter, when you go to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's profile or you go to Barack Obama or anybody else, they will clearly outline that this is a politician's yeah. account and what party they are particularly affiliated yeah. with. And but, even their position there. And even their position. <clears throat> and they will also do the same with government-affiliated media houses. And the reason why they do that is so that the public understands who is co commenting, what their motives and incentives are financially. Yeah. And that doesn't exist right now for Africa. So whether it's Julius Malema or Bobby Wine or whatever the case may be, you may not know um, that these people are politicians, that they're participating in the political race. But also there are African publications which are government affiliated. I'll use The Herald, which is a, a, a ZANU-PF government affiliated publication that has a social media presence and that often puts... Uh, Zano PF government propaganda on on Twitter and they don't have any disclaimer saying that listen We know that this publication is linked to Zano PF and that they are part of the propaganda machine of the regime and that lack of information I think is something that's quite worrying and then you know there are troubling trends that you will sometimes see on Twitter you know, movements which uh, should not be necessarily um, even allowed, which are abusive, which are violent, hashtag rich form, and remain on the platform without Twitter even being aware of them. And it just makes you realize that Twitter has not really been taking Africa as seriously as it should, which is strange considering that Africa has 1.3 billion people and the youth demographic is largely active online. Sometimes people don't even have a mobile phone, but they do have these accounts. They'll yes. use computer shops, they'll yeah. use other people's phones. There is a presence. And I often find that these American um, startups, these tech companies, they're no longer startups really now, they often think of Africa as a by the way, an afterthought. Whereas there's this large market, I, I, I'm just reminded how Spotify dragged their feet yeah. to launch in Africa as if we don't have a sizable market here. That's something that I found to be particularly 
alarming. I don't know, do you want to jump in at this particular point, share some more yeah. of your own thoughts on this topic? I mean, I just take, taking it back to the lack of verification and uh, on, on political accounts and politically affiliated accounts, yeah. I think, um, again, I think Twitter is more concerned with the cultural aspect of, of mm. um, African Twitter because we've seen how, you know, there's a lot of cool things yeah. happen online in Africa and trend on, 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 on Twitter and stuff like that, but they miss the very important, the political conversations that happen mm. out there. And in this moment that we're in, we're just globally, politics are such a hot topic and they're such a hot issue because people are more divided than ever yeah. at, at very opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. So the danger of somebody being able to duplicate an account, a politician's account, and spread fake news uh, it puts a, it, it's very dangerous. And people have done that. There are so many so yeah. and so accounts, yeah. and then they will just say, "Look, it's a parody. Don't worry." You but see. I, I think that's not an acceptable norm. Exactly. And something I wanted to ask you though is this: Africa has aspirations, or young African tech coders, entrepreneurs, they have aspirations to create their own unicorns, which are these billion-dollar uh, valuation companies, and they have their own aspirations. Some of them, I'm sure to create social media networks and that kind of thing. Do you think that when Twitter, Facebook, and Google come and establish themselves here and make you know, the development of the tech ecosystem contingent or dependent on them, that they aren't inadvertently or covertly actually slowing down our own tech independence and innovation? It, it depends. <laughs> Yes and no, mm. right? There's a possibility for that to actually end up being, being yeah. the, the, the case. But at the same time, I think this is an opportunity for them to show that they're not just here to feed off of Africa. Yeah. They're not just here to be another Western country that yeah. will take from Africa and go back. But to show that um, their presence here will make a difference, that their presence here has a, a much broader meaning uh, more than just profit and finance. Yeah. So for them to actually partner with local tech startups yeah. and um, partner with them, assist them, include them in their own growth. But what about, you know, I'm thinking here about the competition side of things because yes. in, a, in a free market or as close to a free market as you can get, although you can never really have a perfectly free market, competition is important. Competition is important because it helps the consumer have options. Yeah. It protects the consumer from abuses and also it prevents, you know, the increase of pricing in a traditional market. Obviously, the digital economy is different yeah. because we get these apps for free. Mm. And as such, most times we don't think about the pricing side of the consumer benefit. We just look at the other elements. But there could be a real threat in the sense that if Twitter is present on, present on the continent, Facebook is present, and they bring their big dollars and everyone is trying to associate themselves mm. with these big companies and code for them, that those young people are not really going to try to compete with them because now they are relying on their income. And Twitter is and Facebook is as well very aggressive towards competitors. Yeah. So it makes you wonder whether or not this will be ultimately of benefit to our goal, which I think is a goal we should have of tech independence. And when I looked at the 11 positions that they advertised, they advertised a senior comms person, a data specialist, and analysts and curators. So they were looking for a media analyst, they were looking for curation and content partnership people. So nothing tick. Yeah. yeah, and, and this is mainly, <clears throat> mainly focused on Ghana and Nigeria. This, that's where they're gonna really focus. It's not really a SADC facing um, appointment at this particular point. But that made me think and wonder, you know, these aren't tech positions that they're advertising. And we, Twitter and Facebook suffer from a problem of having low numbers of tech yeah. personnel from the black community. Yes. So I'm just thinking around all of that. You know, of course, they have done some work and contributed to some uh, organizations in Ghana. And some of them are tech uh, based and it's a coding academy, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But in the back of my mind, you know, I I'm beginning to be somebody who looks at global contributions and the contributions of multinationals, big companies coming into Africa, not just purely from the lens of, oh, this is great, you're giving yeah. us stuff, but also to try to understand what is the long-term value of this financial investment. Mm -hmm. Is it a financial investment that helps Africa and Twitter, or is it a financial investment that helps Twitter more than it helps us? 
because we were already on the platform, you know. But of course, we all use Twitter, we all use the platform, and we want it to be better, we want it to be, have less of the abuses that it has, to have more of the things that they unveil to everybody else. Um, so ultimately, this is a good move. I think it's a great discussion to have and something that we need to be thinking about. I don't know, do you have any final thoughts on this particular topic? I mean, I saw... Um Nana, the, the president of yeah. uh, Ghana and Dorsey having a little bro, yeah. bro band smoke exactly, when exactly. he was announced, Tweeting at each other and, all yeah. uh, and I think that that's really where um, the African, it's up to the African leaders yeah. to be sure that these things actually also, the, the benefit of it trickles down yeah. to the people. So it's not enough for everybody on Twitter to be like, hey, it was good, yay! Yeah. But now now that we know, Nana, that you are yeah. this involved in it, we're looking at you to see how you're going to make this count exactly. for young West African Men and women, yeah, yeah. not just Ghanaian and, and, because, and yeah. other identities. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah, that's cool. And I think what I want to say in closing that it's great that there is competitive rivalry between Nigeria and Ghana. I think competition is great. It makes us better. And as long as it's not based on violence and hate, it's great. So uh, the Joel of Rice debate, we all love watching it from Southern Africa. These tech battles, we're going to love watching them, the tech Joel of debates, as long as it improves yeah. the skills, the competencies, and the positionality of Africa and helps Africans create wealth and improve their quality of lives. I'm all for that kind of competition. We don't have to shy away from competition everywhere, but we just have to always be critical in thinking about any foreign direct investment that comes onto our shores, you know, because we used to really embrace, um, you know, foreign aid back in the days, yeah. but, you know, Walter Rodney wrote a book around how this aid actually didn't help us. And I think uh, Dambi Samoy also wrote one as well, right, yeah. around how, this aid hasn't been, this crippling aid, I think is the name of the book, but I could be wrong on the title. But she wrote a book specifically on how aid didn't help us. So we also have to just always, you know, um, as much as we're welcoming and appreciative of the benefits of foreign investment, the, 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 the passion of people like Jeff Dorsey, we always have to remember that Africa has not really been well served by multinationals and outside actors. And as such, we should have the wisdom to have a little bit of skepticism and recalcitrance in the way that we approach any engagement. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves in situations where we're complaining again yeah. on the outside without having get, gotten the, the advertised benefits. Yeah. So let's leave it there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching. We love and we appreciate all your support. So what I'm going to do is announce that the t-shirts are actually ready now for Josie to Lagos and if you've been waiting for them for all this time I'm very sorry we had to you know scrape scrape at the bottom of the barrel and see what can be done to make sure we have some t-shirts so if you're interested in a t-shirt drop us an email the email will be in the social medias and will be in um, you know what is it the comment section so if you like this um, what, what do they say comment like subscribe share uh, participate in the conversation all of those uh, YouTube things and um, all the best till the next one.